Greetings, kindred spirits. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for those of you that joined me on the Facebook Live regarding the free information I was giving out on your sun, moon and ascendant signs. The purpose of that was so that you could get more information of how the energies were going to affect you when it comes to reading my bi-weekly horoscopes. And I do hope that you found that information helpful. Now before I start talking about the full moon energies, I would like to speak about a very sensitive issue that has arisen over the last few weeks. Regarding Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. As a matter of fact, I don't even like saying both their names in the same sentence. Because in my opinion, these two guys are just so far apart in their morals and lifestyle. The reason why I am connecting these two stories is because of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that will take place on the 12th of January 2020. So for those of you that don't wish to hear this part of the podcast, I have put in a timestamp below so that you can skip this section due to its sensitive content. Because my wish is to relay my personal and astrological perceptions for those that are interested and not to upset anyone or stir up any uncomfortable feelings. The Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which will occur on the 12th of January 2020, will take place in the sign of Sagittarius, which for the most part is the sign of philosophy and religious values. Saturn is about structure and organisation, especially when it comes to the corporate world. Pluto is the planet of transformation, personal power, enlightenment and destruction. In astrology, when I look at this conjunction between Saturn and Pluto in Sagittarius, it suggests to me that this is a time of revelation and that in this time of revelation, it will be a renowned religious organisation that will be the focus in the respect that certain truths will come out that will destroy its existence and credibility in its entirety. I know that certain things are already being revealed but I believe that there will be a lot more exposed throughout this year in the build-up to this exact conjunction. The reason why I'm bringing up these sensitive issues regarding Michael Jackson and R. Kelly is because I really do believe that they are being used as a smokescreen to distract us away from other matters that are escalating regarding this particular religious organisation. And I'm sure you all know which one I'm referring to. As for Michael Jackson, my personal opinion is that he is and always has been innocent. And there is a lot of information out there to suggest that he is. And I'm not trying to convince anyone of his innocence here because for me, it is my personal opinion that I have been led to due to listening to the other side of the story and because of certain channeled information that I had received long before Michael was even accused of these horrendous allegations. Just to give you an example of one of them, actually I will tell you about the first channeled information I received in December 1987. I had a dream just after my daughter was born, who I named Paris which is also another uncanny coincidence. I dreamt that it was evening time and Diana Ross knocked on my door and said, Kim, Michael has been accused of something he hasn't done and needs a place to stay so he can get his head around things. He's coming to England and needs a place to lie low. So can he come and stay here with you? Now, in that dream, I didn't get told what he had been accused of, but I just knew with all my heart 
that whatever it was, he was innocent. And I truly believe that I was given that dream as a premonition of what was to come regarding Michael and to compel me to stop and think about my dream and the probability that he was innocent when the media exploded with the the story of the allegations against him several years later. Because in all honesty, had I not had that dream, I would have probably jumped on the same bandwagon as many others against him. Now I'm not saying this to convince anyone of anything. I'm just giving you an example of why I believe him to be innocent. And as I've already said, hearing the other side of the story, which has also made me question most of the accuser's allegations against him. You know, I also think it's extremely unfair to bring this up again, since he is not here to defend himself. And I think it's extremely unfair to keep putting his children through this pain and heartache when they are still grieving the loss of their father. And I say that with a heavy heart, because I know that the pain and heartache of child abuse is also very devastating and a horrible thing to go through. As for R. Kelly, well, come on, you know, that guy should have been dealt with years ago. And I think it's strange that they are once again bringing up issues around another person who is not here to give their side of the story. And I'm referring to Aaliyah. But I really don't wish to say any more about him because in all honesty, when it comes to R. Kelly, it is what it is. But like I said, I feel strongly that these sensitive issues have been dug up from the past to be used as a smokescreen to something much, much bigger that will be revealed in its full light regardless of the distractions that are being put into place. Because not only do Saturn and Pluto reach an exact conjunction at 26 degrees in Sagittarius, but Mercury and the goddess Ceres will also be in an exact conjunction to Saturn and Pluto too at 26 degrees and I'll get on to the degrees in a minute Mercury is the planet of communication and information and his symbol is the caduceus in which is also a symbol that is connected to Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer the caduceus is the symbol of alchemy and medicine and Mercury himself is considered to be the bridge between heaven and earth, bringing together the unity of mind, body and spirit. He is the messenger and is also associated with the god Hermes, also known as the trickster or the magician. Ceres is the goddess of harvest and nurture. She also represents the mother-child connection and separation. She helps us to deal with grief and rebirth. The sun will also be in conjunction at 25 degrees. And as we all know, the sun shines her light into the darkness and represents our conscious mind. And if we also look at the numerological value of Saturn, Pluto, Mercury and Ceres, who will all be at 26 degrees, which in numerology will equal to the number 8, and means that this conjunction will be karmic in nature, since the number 8 represents karma and reaping what we have sown. The sun at 25 degrees equals to the number 7, which represents spiritual values and the true seeker. Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, will be at 13 degrees, conjunct the south node, which is also about karma, and who will be at 12 degrees. You know, 13 is a very special number. 
because although 12 is considered to be a sacred number, it is actually the number 13 that represents the whole, the Holy One. 12 in numerology breaks down to the number 3, you know, which is Trinity, is the number of Trinity and is alchemical in nature. 3 represents life, death and rebirth, mind, body and spirit, whereas 13 breaks down to 4, the number of stability, wholeness, and is also considered to be the number that represents the pillar of strength. So I feel that this conjunction will bring justice, exposure, and a major revelation of spiritual religious truths, which will bring down an old tradition that may have started out with good intention, but unfortunately, like many other organisational structures, has become corrupt and maladjusted. The truth is that we are all one. One race, one blood, and that the true temple lies within us, not outside of us. I also feel that many other disclosures will take place in the coming year or so. Some disclosures will be based on truth, whilst others will be designed as smokescreen. That is why it is so important for us to stand on our own two feet when it comes to our spiritual values, in a place of unconditional love. And as we continue to head into the age of Aquarius, embracing the brotherhood-sisterhood unity as one whole, in holy communion, as a collective and not in separation, is the way to go. You know, but the connection must come from our own inner knowing, from our own inner temple. You know, we are very close to nearing the end of the 2012 prophecy, with the rising of a focus who represents Christ's consciousness and the inner temple. You know, the great awakening is well underway, and we must hold on to our inner strength, our inner knowing, and embrace that change is needed for the benefit of our future and the future of our children and our children's children. So I thank you all for listening, injured spirits. I love you. So the full moon takes place or reaches its peak in Virgo on the 20th of March at 21.42 in the EDT time zone, on the 21st of March at 1.42 in the GMT time zone, and at 12.42 in the AEDT time zone. The moon in Virgo creates a lot of nervous energy, and in opposition to the wounded healer Chiron and the goddess Vesta of the sacred fire, shows us that we must get to grips with our health and well-being by including them into our daily routines. You know, there's likely to be a lot of stomach issues around this time too, so I would definitely recommend a detox program as well as meditation and exercise. Chiron the Wounded Healer has been active in the astrological charts for quite some time now. And while he has been transiting through Pisces in the true lifetime sky, he has brought to the surface a lot of issues regarding our old wounds and sense of self-value. And from what I have seen, a lot of progress has been made and many have worked really hard at their own self-healing and have gained clarity with regards for the need to set boundaries with others. You know, but that doesn't mean to say that we are entirely comfortable with keeping our boundaries in place, especially for those of us that have spent many years putting others' needs before our own. Actually, it has been a very uncomfortable time for many, having to put their foot down and say no, especially you know, to those we love and care for. So I feel that many are still struggling to either curb their deeply compassionate and empathic natures or, you know, for others to overcome their feelings of neediness. This full moon, however, does show a conflict between the spiritual and the material. 
where there is still much work that needs to be done when it comes to those that are still in resistance and are continuing to display their egoistical behaviours. But the more that the sensitives and empaths continue to work on their self-value, the more the egoists will have to take responsibility for and become accountable for their own actions. This full moon we have a yod, a grand cross, two T-squares and a grand trine, which is not a surprise really since we are in a numerological three month in a three universal year. Together with two further 333 portals, as well as the upcoming March equinox, that will take place on the 20th or the 21st of March, depending on where you live in the world. So, you know, this was always going to be a challenging month, but also a very productive one. The Yod is with the North Node in Sextile to Mars, which does suggest that this would be the right time to move forward towards our destiny and gain the support and cooperation needed, especially when it comes to creating change for the benefit of humanity or society in general and for our Mother Earth. The problem is that both these energies are in quincunx to Jupiter, who is at present in Ophicus, and portrays that these changes are not likely to be in the best interest for all. You know, it also suggests that the execution of these changes will not be in alignment with what is expected, maybe in a moralistic sense. So on a collective level, it seems that it might be a case of being misled or the information is misleading in some way, sugarcoating the true nature or intention. On a personal level, it could be that we have good intentions of making the changes necessary, but don't use the opportunity to its best potential, basically allowing ourselves to get sidetracked or not using the right approach when it comes to acquiring assistance. You know, we must be aware of coming across as arrogant or self-righteous. The Grand Cross I have been following since last June because my intuition told me that it was a very significant aspect to take note of. And this has proven to be relevant to last year's events, as well as this year's. This aspect has been shape-shifting from a T-square to a ground cross, although it's the moon's nodes and Uranus that have been the main players, with other planets and points joining in and having their say. Pluto and the goddess Pallas are at present the guest speakers in this formation. Initially it was Mars and Venus who were the guest speakers, representing the divine masculine and feminine energies and directing us to the importance of the changes that were being created by the moon's nodes and Uranus. And this would, was regarding, our in, regarding the inner union of our divine masculine and divine feminine. You know, the energies that were the theme for 2018, more popularly known as the Twin Flame Union. Now in 2019, it is Pluto and Pallas that are joining forces, representing the need for us to trust our own instincts and to become self-reliant and resourceful when it comes to our lifestyle, as well as recognising synchronicities and seeing the bigger picture when it comes to our own emotions and behavioural patterns. You know, bringing us to the realisation of why we attract into our lives the things we do and how we analyse or react to them. You know, but many are still struggling with facing the true reality of their lives or taking responsibility for the part they play in them. On a collective level, we are being encouraged to not get caught up in the hype when it comes to the media or get distracted from our own inner knowing due to the manipulation of outside forces. The aim with this particular grand aspect has always been 
for us to develop our inner confidence. Excuse me while I stretch my legs. <laughs> and to trust in our own guidance and abilities. Ophiuchus's energy is growing and expanding, especially with Jupiter in her sign, which further emphasises the need to tap into our own inner temple and to trust that our connection to the divine comes from within and not through another or a place outside of ourselves. A lot of Kundalini awakenings have taken place over the last year, as well as a lot of epiphanies when it comes to enlightenment and what enlightenment truly means. The first T-square this full moon includes, includes our moon, who will be in opposition to Chiron, as well as our sun, and all three will be in square to Jupiter in Ophiuchus, which suggests that, the, that many are still dealing with their grief or deep emotional pain, especially since there has been so many transitions that have occurred over the last year. And it is so important for those of us going through this that we give ourselves the time and space for healing when necessary. Because when we are feeling vulnerable, it leaves us open to be taken advantage of. Or we can tend to push our minds and bodies too hard, which takes its toll on our health. It is so important for those of us that are still releasing emotional wounds to allow ourselves the time to heal through self-nurture, meditation and gentle exercise. You know, because allowing ourselves to wallow is also dangerous in the respect that we can become stuck in a rut of depression and apathy. And this is not an easy place to break free from once we have indulged. It's also a hard place for us to reach the realisation that we are actually stuck in that mode in the first place. You know, although many have gone through or are still going through the dark night of the soul, which is a necessary part of spiritual awakening. The second T squares with Jupiter in opposition to Juno. In mythology, Jupiter and Juno are husband and wife, so this would definitely represent intimate relationships. But because Jupiter is in Ophiuchus and Juno in Taurus, it would also represent a conflict between the spiritual and the material. So some relationships at this time could be going through a lot of conflict with regards to infidelity, religious values or financial worries. As Jupiter and Juno are in square to Mercury, who is now retrograding for Aquarius, it's likely that the tongue is running wild. You know where bad words are spoken and promises are broken. It also suggests that there could be betrayals of confidences or breaches of contracts. Mercury retrograding for Aquarius is actually a much more welcome placement than it was in Pisces. In Pisces there was a feeling of disconnectedness and confusion. In Aquarius, it gives us the motivation to come up with some original solutions to old problems, or to look to old ideas that were ahead of their time, and with a few tweaks, make use of them in the present. We could also come up with ideas at this time that will be of benefit to our future generations too. But we must also be aware that eccentricity and even shocking ideas or behaviours can also be displayed under this retrograde transit. Although boundaries will be more respected and adhered to. With Mercury retrograde in Aquarius and in conjunction to Neptune, there could be further epiphanies or inventive ideas. This is also a good time for indulging in music, art and crafting in all its forms and would be a fantastic release for the intense nervous energy that will be highly charged throughout this month. So indulging in our creative pursuits would be a good way of releasing this energy and any feelings of oversensitivity. 
The grand triangle between our moon, Mars, Saturn and Pluto gives us the confidence and motivation to take advantage of opportunities that come our way. Although we would be wise to wait until Mercury retrograde completes before pushing forward in a practical way or starting anything new. Actually, this is an ideal time to take notes and or prepare our ideas and creativities with discipline and self-confidence. Meaning, not to have to get approval from outside of ourselves and trust in, in our own inner wisdom. Because as much as this grand aspect provides us with the energy and confidence to take on a challenge, it also serves those that are manipulative and self-serving. So again, thinking independently and using our inner wisdom to go over the details and practicalities will be the best way to go. So for this full moon and the next two weeks, I suggest that we continue to work on self-nurture, get creative and definitely meditate. Deep breathing techniques, gentle exercise such as walking, yoga or tai chi would be ideal, unless you're a gym person or are involved in sports. I recommend that we burn a purple candle and rose incense for wisdom and calming. In meditation I would concentrate on all the chakras, but concentrating more on the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, third eye and the crown chakras because I feel it would be the higher chakra points that will be in need of regulating. Um, I haven't actually looked at Steve Noble's meditations at the moment but um, I am wondering if maybe a violet light one would be good for this um, full moon. Yeah, so I think he's actually released a new violet light meditation. So, um, either check out his channel. Or I will post up his link to that meditation on my Facebook page. And the link to that is below in the description box. So thank you all again so much for your love and support. And yeah, wishing you all peace and much love.